In Timbuktu, my friend Pastor Nook Agim Fayatara told me that one of the big hurdles that they face is that when they go out into the outlying Muslim and animistic areas, the people won't listen to them. But he said, if we could fix people's teeth, then even the Muslim sorcerers won't be able to keep the people from coming to us. And once we've done something for them, then they will be obliged to listen to what we have to say. People often ask, well, who taught the Waurani how to do dentistry? And I tell them I did. And they said, oh, I didn't know you were a dentist. And then I have to admit I'm not. But fortunately, a dentist from Orangeburg, South Carolina came down to visit us and he wanted to fix some of the Waurani's teeth. And while he was taking a break one day, one of the Waurani took up the tools and started drilling one of the other people's teeth. And when this dentist saw what good work this Waurani elder could do with no training at all, he said, you know, we shouldn't be doing dentistry for these people, we ought to be teaching them to do it. And I said, you're, you're singing to the choir now. So he said, how can I help? I said, I'll tell you what, how about if you teach me and then I'll teach them? So he gave me two semesters of dental school, one on Friday afternoon and one on Saturday afternoon. And then I taught the Waurani everything that I knew in a few days. You know, the next time I went down to visit the Waurani, they knew a lot more than I had taught them. They started with what I gave them and then they built on that. And I asked them if they'd been taking this portable equipment that we had developed from place to place to fix people's teeth, and they said no. And I said, why not? That's why we made it portable. And they said, Baba, you bring us another one, then we'll go from place to place. They said, we can't take this one to other villages because the people from the other villages are coming to us every day to have their teeth fixed. And then they said, and Baba, when they come and we fix their teeth, then just like we said, they see us well, and seeing us well, we teach them to walk God's trail. One of the big challenges that we're working on now is how to make it possible for an illiterate person who can learn to do dentistry or things like that to teach somebody else who's also illiterate. To do that, we've de been developing a solar-powered video pack. With that solar-powered video pack, they can not only train other people to do things that they've learned, but they can also play evangelistic and discipleship videos for people things that they couldn't read because they're illiterate. They can play on a video player, and I guarantee you in places in frontier areas, if you put a video on, it's such a novelty that people come from everywhere to see it. And they don't want to see it just once. They will watch it over and over and over until they've memorized it. A few months ago, Nick Askew came to iTech to help us. His particular interest was in many radio stations to help indigenous people be able to broadcast God's Word in a very low-tech way to people in their tribe. Nick actually suggested that we add a, a transmitter into our solar-powered video delivery system. So now we have a prototype of a backpack portable uh, video player that's solar powered that actually has a radio station built inside of it so after playing the Jesus film or something like that to people then the uh, the narration which is the Gospel of Luke can be played over and over and transmitted to even a, a small city with this little tiny solar powered radio station those are the kind of multipliers that we need to put in the hands of indigenous people so that one person can reach a hundred, not only to give them the gospel, but then to disciple them, to help them grow in their faith so that they too can be a net giver.